a couple of galaxies, a double star, a planetary nebula, all in one constellation, what could possibly get better than that? Well, this one is available all year round. Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now the plow slash saucepan slash Big Dipper is probably the most familiar sight in the uh, Northern Hemisphere night sky. And uh, it's probably one of the first constellations that you're actually going to learn. I mean, I know it was the first constellation I ever learned. And, uh, but there's a lot more to uh, the plow than uh, first meets the eye. And there's loads of interesting uh, little objects dotted in and around uh, the plow. And uh, to, to find these objects, it's, so, it's always best to, uh, well, it's definitely going to help you to just know the names of the seven stars that make up Ursa Major. And each one has its own little personality. So let's just have a quick look at Ursa Major and the seven stars. Okay, so let's start off with the first star of the bowl or of the saucepan, if you like, which is Dube. Now, when you first look at Dube, it's going to look like an ordinary star with the naked eye. But if you put a telescope to it, you're going to see that it's a distinctive orangey red color. And it also has a companion, a blue star, a little bit like Alberio in Cygnus. But they're not a real double star. They're just passing through space together. Now, underneath Dube, we've got Mirac. Now, Dube and Mirac are also known as the pointer stars. Um, because if we draw an imaginary line up through Mirac and Dube and keep going, the next uh, brightest star that you come to is Polaris, the pole star. Moving across, we've got Fad. Now, Fad, unfortunately, is a bit of a boring one. Uh, there's not a lot to say about Fad. It's just an ordinary star. Then we've got Megrez in the top left. Now, this is probably the faintest star of the Plow stars. Then uh, we've got a great name, Alioth, which sounds like it came from Lord of the Rings or something. Now, Alioth is actually a variable star, but only slightly. And it's probably the brightest star in uh, all of the seven stars of the Plow. Then we come to Mizar, probably the most famous star, not because of anything it's done, but because of a companion, uh, which you can actually see with the naked eye. Now, this is a true double star. Uh, and the other little star that you will see is Alcar. Uh, now, Alcar and um, Mizar uh, used to be known as the horse and rider. Uh, but like I say, this is one, a double star that you can quite easily see with the naked eye. Okay, moving on to Alcade. Now, this is uh, a lot more distant than most of the others, uh, with only Dube further away from Earth. So, they're the seven stars of uh, the plow. Now, the plow is only part of a constellation. It's what's actually called an asterism. Now, an asterism is just part of a constellation, basically. And there's actually, so it's part of a bigger picture. And the bigger picture, of course, is the full constellation Ursa uh, Major, uh, which is the Great Bear. Now, um, if you look at the Ursa <laughs> Major, you'll, you'll notice that the, uh, the handle of the pan, if you like, is meant to represent the tail of a bear. And uh, I don't know about you, but that seems a little bit strange because I don't know any bears that have a big, long tail. <laughs> Never understood that one. Okay, on to some planetary nebulas and some galaxies. Right, if we have a look at uh, the far left bottom star, sorry, the far right bottom star of the uh, plow, you'll, uh, which is Mirac. Okay, now if we just go to the left of Mirac, you're going to come to M97, the Owl Nebula. Now, uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a challenge for you to find. Now, I'm not saying you won't be able to see it. It's, um, you can just about get it in uh, at this five inch scope. But if I were to take this five inch scope to some dark locations, I wouldn't have any problem at all. So this is gonna be one of those targets where you're just gonna need to get good light, uh, you know, let, not too much light pollution. Um, get yourself nicely dark adapted. Um, I have done some techniques on uh, preparing yourself for seeing um, 
uh, some video, sorry, uh, and some techniques to prepare yourself for deep sky targets. So I'll leave a link to some of those in the description. So take, put all these things into practice. And uh, like I say, it's a good, using Mirac as a, as a good starting point of where to aim your telescope. It's just a little bit further down from Mirac, you'll find the Owl Nebula M97. Okay, moving on from Mirac, you'll come to FAD. And if you draw an imaginary line from FAD up through Duvi, okay, the top star, the first star of the bowl, uh, or the, uh, the bowl of the saucepan, if you like, and keep going the same distance again, you're going to come to two of my favourite targets, M81 and M82, uh, also known as Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy. Now, these two, you shouldn't have much trouble seeing these. Um, again, you preferably the darker the sky, always the darker the sky is the better light, but I know that's not um, always convenient for everybody. But this is one that you can see even in light polluted skies. So give this one a good go, it's uh, well worth the view. Now if we move to the last two stars of um, Mizar and Alcade of uh, uh, Ursa Major, then what you want to do, uh, the distance of Mizar and Alcade, right? If you draw, if you imagine uh, an equilateral triangle, okay? Just put another little spot there to make like almost a perfect equilateral triangle. You're going to come to M101. Now, this is also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy. And it's, uh, it's a shame that uh, Andromeda are in position on such a side, because Andromeda would look something like this. Uh, but again, this is going to be one of those targets that's going to be a little bit of a challenge in smaller telescopes. But don't give up, all right? It is there. You will be able to see it. You don't need massive amounts of equipment. The most important thing, and I'm gonna keep, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, dark skies okay just it's something that even if you don't get to see say the owl nebula and the pinwheel galaxy i can guarantee you're going to see all the other interesting targets that i've been talking about uh but just put it down to like something to look forward to okay for when you do go to those uh darker locations because the pinwheel galaxy is a, it's a lovely photographic thing it's, it's good for it's more of a photogenic object i would say than a visual visual you know like i say you can just about see the spiral of it um again in <laughs> i'm going to say it again i'm sorry guys i'm going to say it again in dark skies um but uh, just like i say give it a good go uh, make a note of it even if you don't see it you know on the night and don't be disappointed never be disappointed okay make it like turn that disappointment into excitement and think, well, you know, there's going to be a time when I will be able to see it. And now you know exactly where to look. So as you can see, there's a lot more to the plough than you may have first thought. Well, I hope you have a lot of fun with this one, because like I say, there's a, there's a lot of targets to uh, go and uh, feast your eyes on. <laughs> well, that's about it for another video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button because that one is the one that counts. In the meantime, guys, go and find yourself a bear in the sky and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.